Hello Arduino people. Welcome back to the Arduino Basics tutorial series. In this lesson, lesson number nine, we're going to be tackling a color sensor. Specifically, we're going to be looking at this color sensor here. This is the TCS 3200 color sensor. Comes with four bright white LEDs on it and then the little sensor is in the middle. The wiring for this one's a little bit more complicated than some of the others because we have to use the sensor off of the breadboard just because the way the pinout works and the way we try to connect to the breadboard gets really messy. Uh, so it actually works better for us to just connect it loose off the breadboard and then we'll use it accordingly. Let's start with the wiring and then we'll explain from there. The first part of the wiring diagram is one we're already familiar with, which is wiring up an RGB LED to our Arduino board with a 220 ohm resistor on the ground wire. So you'll see pin 9, 10, and 11 are running for the blue, green, and red pins of the RGB LED. The long leg of the RGB LED is running through a 220 ohm resistor with a ground wire to connect to the ground channel on my breadboard. So that is wiring that we're already familiar with. So step one would be getting that rigged up. To wire up your color sensor, you're going to want a female to male wire to run off of each of the pins of the color sensor. We'll go through the pinout and how to what connect this to the breadboard or to the Arduino. Let's start with the pins that are going to connect directly to the Arduino. You can see pins four, seven, and eight are all gonna be connecting to our pinout. Pin number four is actually gonna to go to the out pin and these are labeled exactly as they're written on this diagram. So you'll see them on your thing as out. So the out pin on our color sensor is gonna to run to pin four on our Arduino. S2 is gonna run down to pin number seven, and the S3 is gonna run to pin number eight. Those are the only three pins that are gonna connect directly to our Arduino board. The rest of the pins on the color sensor are actually gonna to connect to our breadboard, mainly to voltage and ground. So VDD is gonna come connect to the voltage row. Now on the other side, of it. S0 is going to connect to ground, S1 is going to connect to volt, and then ground is going to connect to ground. In this OE pin we are leaving unconnected, so this pin is not going to get connected. So all in all there should be seven wires coming out of your color sensor. Three of them are going directly into Arduino pins, four, seven, and eight. The other four are going into voltage or ground wires according to this pin. Now you're just going to have your sensor loose. It's not going to be directly plugged into your breadboard, so you'll have to sit it down somewhere where the wires allow uh, beside your breadboard or beside your Arduino. Okay, that's it for the wiring. Take a minute, make sure you've got it all set up properly according to the pinout, and then we'll move along and look at the code. So here we are inside of a new sketch for lesson number nine, where we're going to be working with a color sensor. Now this is going to be the most code that we've written so far, because there's a lot going on with reading values, analyzing those values, and then using those values to display a color on an RGB LED. So stay with me and be sure to pause the video so you have time to properly type up the code on your own. To start, we're going to declare a whole bunch of variables that we're going to need to use throughout our program. So let's go through all of the variables we've got. Here. Red pin, green pin, and blue pin. Pin 9, 10, and 11 are for our RGB LED. S27, S38, and out pin 4. These are the ones that are connected directly to our color sensor. We then have three integers we'll use later for calculating the red, green, and blue color strength that we're going to read in from the color sensor. And then finally, an unsigned integer for pulse width. Remember, integers are positive and negative. Unsigned integers are not going to be positive or negative. They're going to be unsigned, which just means that you get a wider range of values. And we're going to use pulse width as well to do with the input from the sensor. Jumping into our setup function, we'll start by setting up our serial monitor. Now that our serial monitor is set up, let's go ahead and set up our pins as either inputs or outputs. So our RGB pins are all going to be outputs, just like they were in previous programs. For our color sensor pins, we plugged in three wires from the color sensor. Two of them are going to be outputs, that's seven and eight, and one of them is going to be an input, that is four. Pin mode for S2 is output, pin mode for S3 is output, and pin mode for out pin is input. So this is going to allow us to have the pins connected to the color sensor read properly as outputs or input values. So there's all that's happening in the setup function. Now we're ready to jump down into the loop function. So the way the color sensor works is that we send values of high or low to pins S2 and S3. And depending on what we send dictates whether it's sending us the red, green, or blue values that it is sensing using the sensor. If we send a low, to both S2 and S3 that we are telling our color sensor that we want to read red color from the sensor. So we do a digital write to send a low signal over pins S2 and S3. This is telling the color sensor, please give me the red value that you're reading with your sensor. We then use the pulse width variable to store the pulse that we read in through that pin number four, okay, using a low signal. 
So this is saying check that input pin of four for the signal, store it in pulse width. Now it's gonna give us a range from zero to 2,560, give or take a little bit. So we're gonna to need to do some math to manipulate that range in our favor. Okay, so to do some of that math, let's have a look at what's involved. We're gonna use that R color strength variable that we set up at the beginning, because remember, we're dealing with red right now. We start by doing this divisor, pulse width divided by 10, and then we subtract one. So we're taking this number from 2560 into that range of zero to 255, which is the range that we need for color values, okay? Now, we can actually increase that value 10, okay, in order to increase the sensitivity of the reading from the sensor. So this number you may need to play with a little bit depending on the sensor that you're dealing with. And we'll explain that a little later when we look at the output. Then I do a 255 minus the color strength, okay? And this allows me to now have a color between zero and 255. So a small pulse width is gonna be a strong color map, okay? And a large pulse width it's gonna be a poor color match, and that's what we want, okay? So this is gonna help us narrow this down uh, into an actual color value from a pulse width. So we're now gonna repeat this code twice, once for green and once for blue, but we're gonna send slightly different pulses to the S2 and S3 pins. So for green, we need to send a high to both S2 and S3. So we do that, and then we do all the same values. Now you'll see that my division here is by 14 and not by 10. This was due to the sensitivity I was having with my color sensor. When we go to look at the output later, you'll see you might need to adjust that slightly in order to make sure that you're getting the readings that you want from your color sensor. I should mention at this point that there are more advanced ways to fine tune the actual values of your color sensor. Feel free to do some digging online and you can get into that more in depth. But because of the sake that this is an introductory tutorial series, we thought it was best not to go into those technical details. We'll now do this one final time for blue. With blue, we're gonna send a low to S2 and a high to S3. You'll see my divisor in this case is 11. Again, all dependent on sensitivity. I'll show you later how we can play with those values if we need to. So at this point, we have a red, green, and a blue reading from the color sensor. And all we're doing in this lesson is we're trying to decide which color is most prominent of the three. And we're gonna use that color to display a color on the RGB LED. But before we get into the LED, let's remember that the serial monitor can also be very helpful in debugging and understanding our code. So let's do a little bit of a printout to the serial monitor so that we can analyze things as we're testing. So what you'll see I printed out is the R color strength value, a space, the green color strength, a space, the blue color strength, and then a space with a new line character. And then I wait a quarter of a second. Okay? And this is just gonna allow me to constantly see the values that the color sensor is reading. So that if I wanted to troubleshoot, if I'm having issues with sensitivity, I can see what's coming up on my color sensor. In our final step, we need to decide which color is the most prominent. So which color is the largest value? And then based on that, we need to set the color on our RGB LED. So we're gonna do this with a series of if statements to check which value is actually the biggest. So the first one I put in, if red color strength is greater than B color strength and red is greater than green, and that means that red is the biggest of the three colors. Therefore, we're gonna set red to 255 and set green and blue to zero. This just sets them up to write to the LED later on in the code. We're now gonna do a similar statement for blue and for green. So we have an else if for green is bigger than blue and green is bigger than red, then set the green value and zero out the other two. If blue is bigger than green and blue is bigger than red, then set blue and zero out red and green. So our red, green, and blue values now should either be all red, all green, or all blue. So now we can write that value to the LED. <clears throat> now in this case, I'm using all 255, so it wouldn't matter if I use digital or analog writes. But just for the sake that I might not want to go full brightness, I think it's best for me to use analog writes. So here you can see analog write the red pin, the red color value, green pin, the green color strength, and blue pin, the blue color strength. And this will write those values out to our RGB LED. Now that we've decided which one's bigger from the color sensor, we can set the values on the actual LED. So coming into the serial monitor, just to show you a little bit more, my RGB is currently turned on to red. And if you look, my red value is clearly the highest that's showing up in my serial monitor over here. If I put the blue in front, 
you'll see that the blue value on the end is now coming in as the highest reading. So what I recommend when you're setting those denominators for devising, have a nice clear red, green, and blue object that you want to stick in front of your color sensor and then make sure that the values are working out so that the value that you want is coming in higher. And if that means you have to adjust the denominator a little bit, that's okay. So here's my green. You can see that now my green's coming in around 160. My red and my blue are both coming in around 100. So green is clearly the dominant color. So it turns my green LED on. Uh, so that's how you can set up the denominators a little bit. And it just might take a little bit of practice to fine tune it. Um, like I said, you can get more technical with how you fine tune these color sensors, but this seemed like a good introduction for somebody who wasn't quite ready for all the technical details involved in trying to set up your sensor to be properly calibrated. Great job with the main lesson in lesson number nine. Uh, this was a tricky one right from the start, so just getting to the point where you got the base lesson working is a huge success. Awesome. If you want an extension on this, let's go with something a little bit more straightforward. How about you add yellow as a color that it can recognize and write to the RGB LED? Now you may need to do a little bit of Googling about how to read in that yellow value or how you might want to set that up. That's okay if you want to do that. Just make sure you understand code that you find and don't just copy and paste it in blindly. Good luck. All right, so this lesson was pretty tricky and the extension added a whole other level, but if you really want a challenge for this, uh, you can do a bit of research online. And the next step to this would be instead of just looking for the dominant color to actually get the hue of a color and write that to the RGB LED. So for example, if you had a more pinkish color coming in from the color sensor, so looking at all three color values, so looking at all three color values, the red, the green, and the blue together, and seeing what colors they make up. This might take a little bit more work in calibrating your sensor properly, but it is possible to use analog writes to your RGB LED, reading in the inputs properly from the sensor to actually have it match as close as possible the actual hue of the color that it's reading in front of it. You'll want to use lots of color cards of different colors to put in front of the sensor to help you calibrate this to get it working successfully. Best of luck as you work on the challenge. And I'll see you back here in lesson number 10. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to like the video and subscribe to our channel to stay up to date as we continue the tutorial series.